It's been a few years now since the release of Excel's dynamic array formally. The experts said they would change the game a few years later, have they? Chris here, Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. In this video, I'm gonna talk you through the five dynamic array formulae that were released a few years ago. And don't worry if you've never seen these formulae before, I'm gonna give you some easy examples to download and work through. We're gonna talk about their pros and cons and I'm gonna reveal, am I actually using any of these Excel formulae in my day-to-day -day work? So firstly, unique, and let me get straight to the point here. I love this formula because it does a job I've done so many times over the years, I'm sure you have too, which is deduplicating data. Now, previously I would have done this by clicking around Excel or with a VBA routine. Now we can do it with a formula. It's particularly useful for creating drop-down menus because we can just easily pick out all the unique values from a data set. Quick demo. So make sure you download the download file and work along with me. What do we want to do? We want a unique list of home teams. So to do that, I've created a supporting sheet, the engine sheet, gonna to go to cell B4 and type equals unique, open the bracket there, then back to the data sheet. And we just wanna select the range from which we want to draw those unique values. So control shift down on the Windows PC, you can just click and hold, go to the bottom of the data set. Don't even need to close the brackets here. We can just hit enter and we can see suddenly we've got a beautiful unique list there. We can tell it's a dynamic array because it's spilled down to the end of the list and it's got a blue outline and some shading. Those things show us we've got a dynamic array there. Now, we wanna do more than that on the dashboard, the team select cell here. We wanna drop down menu showing that unique list. So how to do that? We can go to data, and then data validation, uh, which is, this is the old remove duplicates option, of course, the data validation here, and then we're going to go to list. And then for source, we're going to go to the engine, click the top cell, and then this is where the magic happens. We just use the hash or the hashtag there. Now that says to Excel, we're using a dynamic array and just display all the way to the end of this dynamic array. So I can hit enter and okay, and we can see in our team select cell, We've got our drop down menu there, and we can see the bottom value is Newfoundland. And in the engine, I can see Newfoundland, the bottom value there. Now that's pretty cool, but ideally, I'd like to be able to put the unique formula straight into that data validation dialog box without having to use another worksheet. It does feel like an opportunity was missed there to make this task super smooth. Now, when the dynamic array formula first came out, the one I was looking forward to most was the filter formula. Why is that? Well, over the years, I've spent so much time, you probably have to filtering data in Excel, clicking through the filter menus, it takes so much time. So the idea of having a formula to do that, I was really looking forward to it. My actual experience of filter, however, has been somewhat mixed and I have been a bit disappointed. Now there's no doubt the basic function works well, particularly if you're just using a single criteria. You can list all of those values, display them, that's fantastic. But there's a few drawbacks. Firstly, this formula can get really long. It's a bit like building a sum ifs formula. So you've got to have solid formula building skills and quite a lot of patience to put the formula together in the first place. Secondly, yes, we have the option to filter by multiple criteria. But if you have multiple criteria set up, you have to have entries for each of those criteria. Otherwise, the filter formula isn't going to work. So you can't just switch off one of those criteria. I found that really quite impractical. And thirdly, you know, you don't just want to view the data. It's very likely you'll want to analyze the data and the special notation for dynamic array formally. So that hash that should reference the whole of the dynamic array, that doesn't seem to work in the filter formula. So for example, if you wanted to sum up those filtered values in the dynamic array, that's not an easy thing to do. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with this one. It's great just for viewing the values, but if you wanna actually analyze those values, then you're gonna have to use something like a pivot table. So what about sort and sort by? Well, like filter, these automate a task that people are doing in Excel all the time, which is sorting data. And the basic function seems to work absolutely fine, but I just haven't really found myself using this formula much. Maybe that's because once data is sorted, literatively and figuratively, 
it is sorted. You don't need to sort made data multiple times. Unlike filtering, you want to put different filters on, multiple filters on to really understand the data set. So I just haven't used this formula much. However, I've found one specific application which is combining sorts with the unique formula. Quick demo. So we've already seen how we can use the unique formula to display a list of unique values for a drop down menu. But what if we wanted to sort these values to display them alphabetically? That would be more helpful for the user. So to do that, let's go to the engine sheet, which is where we originally put our unique formula. Then it's really simple. We're just going to envelop the unique formula in the sort formula. Very simple. Open and close the brackets, hit enter. Suddenly the unique list is sorted. Going back to our dashboard and we can now see our drop down menu is sorted into alphabetical order too. So that's pretty cool. And for me, this is the main role of the sort formula as a companion formula, if you like, to the unique formula to get that beautiful sorted list of unique values. I find the sequence formula a bit obscure because there isn't a clear practical application for it, you know, unlike sort and filter and even the unique formula. So what's the point? Well, I think it's a great way to access dynamic arrays. That's because it's a fairly simple formula, really just a number of rows, a number of columns. It's a great way to start practicing and building your confidence with dynamic arrays. One possible application is the idea of generating serial numbers in rows or columns. You could use the sequence formula to help you with that. Quick demo. So let's suppose we wanted to give a number to each match in the Doggy Football League. How might we do that? Well, we could use sequence to help us here. So let's get started typing in sequence, opening the bracket, and then it's rows and columns. So how many rows do we want to populate with sequential numbers? And let's go for an example. Let's just say 10. That's how simple the, the formula is. That's going to give us 10 rows and you can see one to 10 there. So yeah, you could do that in a kind of static way, put whatever number you need in here, but it would be better to make it a bit more dynamic. And you can do that by combining sequence with a counting formula. You can see I've got count A here, counting the number of entries from cell C5 in column C all the way up to cell 1000, which will be enough for our purposes. So rather than typing our static hard-coded value in here, if you like, we can just select the formula and you can see suddenly our sequence has gone all the way down to the bottom and each of our match days has a number. So that's pretty cool, but probably not game changing. So I'd say sequence is one to experiment with initially and then probably in the longer term, you can safely ignore it. Now I find the next one quite impressive, but also very, very niche. And I find it curious that they included a formula about random numbers in the first release of dynamic array formula. Yes, random numbers only really useful to people who are doing what's called simulation modeling or stochastic modeling. And you might be thinking, well, Chris, I'm never going to do that. I can switch off now. Well, that modeling is actually really interesting. It's good fun and it could be a great way to build your Excel modeling skill. I'll put some of our videos on the topic in the video description below. And it's a curious one for me because it exposes one of the main weaknesses of the filter formula, which is you can't really perform an operation. You can't analyze that filter data. We can do that with rand array. Quick demo. So let's look quickly at the rand array formula back on the engine sheet here. So typing in rands are there and then tab key to populate the formula. And you can see we can specify rows and columns. And then there's some arguments that help us control the nature of the random number generated. But we're not too interested in those today. I just want 10 rows of random decimals to be generated and this formula will do the job, hit enter, and you can see our random numbers there. So that might be useful if you're doing some stochastic modeling or similar, as I mentioned, but this formula is interesting to me because it does what filter can't do. So we can actually sum up this array by selecting the top of the array there, then using that hash notation. That hash notation works with dynamic arrays to go to the end of the, the array. Then I can hit enter and you can see this formula using random array. We can actually sum up the array. So you're thinking, Chris, I can now add up a list of random numbers. That's not particularly helpful. Yes, 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 I hear you. But there are some impressive applications of the RAND array formula. In the video description below, I've put a link to a model built one of our channel viewers, David Cooper. It's an impressive model using RAND array to solve a real world problem. Check it out. Otherwise, it's perhaps more a curiosity. Curious for me, as I said, because it works differently to the filter formula in that we can actually analyze the data that's in the array. 
Okay, so what's our verdict here? Are these formulae any good and what role should they play in your Excel practice? Well, the benefits of the formulae are clear, but are they game changing? I'm not so sure. Being able to sort data, filter data, get those unique values, that's incredibly useful, but it seems that if you want to do more, things get more difficult. And I really felt this with the filter formula. You really want to analyze that filtered data that seems to be difficult to do. It's almost like these formally, they do those single step operations well, but if you want to do something more complex, you realize they don't seem to be that well integrated with Excel's broader infrastructure. And that's why if you want to do more than one of those single step operations, you're going to need something like a pivot table or even VBA. And yes, dynamic array formulae do not replace VBA in any way, shape or form, in my opinion, VBA is on a higher order of magnitude. It's actually a programming language. You can get all kinds of things done in Excel with VBA. So they're just not a replacement, not a comparison for me. So overall, my views are mixed. Yes, some really good practical value, but not a transformational effect on your Excel practice. And my viewpoint was kind of confirmed by the poll that I did right here on the Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions YouTube channel. About 50% of people saying that they use these formally all the time or some of the time, but also 50% of, of people saying they rarely use the formally or even they've never heard of the formally at all. And of course, there's other ways to do the jobs that the dynamic array formally might do for you. And there's a multitude of reasons for sticking with your tried and tested approach. The most obvious one being that if you're creating files that other people are gonna use like we are, you can't be sure they're gonna be on Excel 365. These formally only work on Excel 365. So for me, it begs the question, and it's a question I'm thinking about all the time, if dynamic array formally won't take my Excel to the next level, they're not changing the game, what is going to change the game for me? I think it's all about mindset. The most important thing is how you're actually thinking about Excel. And it's so difficult, I know, but so many people out there, it's all about quick solutions, just going from one problem to the next in a very ad hoc way just trying to get through the day, maybe a quick 30 second video to learn something about Excel. That's the problem, I'm afraid. That's really the problem. You've got to try to move away from that mindset, move towards a mindset of learning, long-term improvement, and developing a kind of informal methodology for how you deal with problems in Excel. Now, that's exactly what we try to do here at Tiger. And if that resonates with you, I've put a load of our best videos in the video description below and in the pinned comment. And if you are ready to go to the next level, you'll love our member community. Learn that Excel spreadsheet methodology with me and a group of like-minded people. You can check that out on the website. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.